And going back to the discussion about balancing the development of the team versus kind of looking at leagues and things like that, I understand that for you, looking at the sustainable growth of your team is, is more important. But is there not a sense in which, you know, in terms of producing players to join your team, the way that they perceive Tottenham really based on how you finish in the league, you know, that if they've got other offers from other clubs, then they may just look at the league and where you finish them other than they get to play Champions League football. Yeah, I don't want those players because they don't want to come to Tottenham. They want to go to a Champions League club. I signed Mickey Van Der Veen this year. He's not a bad player, is he? And we were in the Champions League. No, I don't want those players. That's that's a beautiful discussion for me to have. That's one of the discussions I have. Why do you want to come to Tottenham? Because if you want Champions League football and that's all you want, you don't want to come to Tottenham. You just want you just want to go to a Champions League club. I want people who want to come to Tottenham who know this club know the challenge we've got, and we do have a challenge. We're different to other clubs in that we haven't had success for a while, so I'm looking for a certain type of character. He's going to say, you know what, they're not in Champions League, but you know what, if I win something with them, that could mean something to my career and to me, so yeah, I'm up for that fight. So that's part of the discussion. I, I don't think that that makes a difference to me in terms of the players. We, like I said, I, we've had two windows so far, and I haven't had an issue bringing players, the players I want, to this club even though we're not in Champions League. So you don't see your, your desires to make your team sustainable in terms of their growth as being incongruent with, with bringing them to the place you want. It's, all about, it's more about character. It's, it's, it's about growth of the team, as you said. So, you know, the character is a big part of that for sure. Um, but, you know, if, it's, if, it's, if, if their motivation is other, anything other than joining this football club, then I just think, for me anyway... I, I'm not saying that that's the right or wrong. It's just for me that that's not the kind of you know players we we need for this for where we are at the moment, where we want to be. And as I said, it's it's worked that case so far. And the two windows we've had with the players we've brought in, they've all taken on the challenge of coming to a club that's hasn't got Champions League football. But hopefully, they can um, they can do something more than that. Um. And on Wednesday, it's five years since this uh, fantastic stadium was opened. And not to go back to the financials, but from the ball race. Which you will. I can see. Yeah, that it's played a big part, part of it. Yeah. Not just the attendance of real fans here, but all the other yeah. uses it has. Mm. I mean, how much was the stadium a uh, uh, draw for you when you. Uh, oh, yeah, no. I mean,. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's a fantastic stadium and, and the facilities here are fantastic. So you kind of factor that into it, but it wasn't the reason I came to Tottenham. But you know, again, when you're talking about trying to compete at the highest level, you see how important it has become to have sort of other revenue streams. And, um, you know, I think for where we are as a club at the moment, <coughs> without that ability to, you know, to generate revenue from outside just the football... Um, we would have been in a more difficult position to kind of continually have a team that can compete at the highest level against you know some of the some of the other clubs. So um, yeah, that you know, like I said, look, the main reason I joined this football club more than anything else. The only and you know I get it. It's a Premier League. I'm I'm earning decent money and it's high profile and it's got a great stadium, great facilities. It hasn't won anything for a while. That's why I came, and that's kind of the biggest attraction. So if they were playing out of the back of, you know, some other, you know, sort of stadium, um, it wouldn't have made a difference to me. Um, it's what what attracted me to was that I see, you know, a really big club that hasn't success for quite a while, and it's a great challenge for me. And just back to Brown, you know, he's playing with a bit of swagger at the moment. Um, Gareth Bale. When, he, when Brennan first came to the club, set the sky with the limit there. Obviously, played with him for Wales. And he's a fantastic player in his own right. I mean, would you agree? Do you see a ceiling on that potential? No, I don't see a ceiling on anyone's potential. That's why we bring him to the club. And, uh, you know, with, yeah, I've said all along, I mean, it, if we had had this conversation probably six weeks ago, I think people were asking me, you know, why can't Brennan start games? And, you know, it, it's all these things, are, like I said, they're all a snapshot in time and, and I understand, but I always take a, a broader view on these things. And I, I've seen him, you know, I think he's handled it really well. Um, just, you know, he was 
signing an attacking player, a young attacking player to a big club. You know, we had a minimum of 30 goals walk out the building at the start of the year, you know, and people are going to be looking at how we're going to replace that, you know, and it can weigh heavily on a young guy's shoulders like him, not that we expected, you know, Brent to, to, to replace Harry, but we needed goals and assists. But I, I've liked the way he's handled it. We've tried to sort of tread carefully with him because I... I can see the potential in him and I can see, you know, how much he can improve and, and the attributes he has. I've got no doubt will fit really well with this team, but I'm not going to put a ceiling on it because um, that would be unfair on him. But, you know, we like the way he's progressing, but we, we certainly believe there's more to come for sure. And Gareth Bale's a legend, mate. What a player. Just just finally, um, you... you what was your connection with the fans, uh, obviously from the result side of football, but I feel like the way you conduct yourself in here and, and when you speak to the media and therefore to the fans, it's a big part of how, uh, you know, I can think of your interaction with Charlie earlier, but that feels like it might go viral. A lot of these things go viral. Sorry, sorry, Charlie. <laughs> no, but like, there's a few of them today. Mm. How aware of you? Where are you? Or conscious of that? Are you? And how important is it in a modern manager to have that kind of Look, it, I mean, it, I think yeah, I think it is important. It's not easy, and I'm not saying it because it's you guys, but yeah, you look at yeah, if you stay in this game for any length of time, the amount of times you have to do this and answer questions that can be repetitive at times, or can be reactive to and and. But I've always kind of, I have taken that part of it seriously because I always feel like, like I said, I, as much as I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you guys, I'm not really talking to you guys. I'm talk, I am. I'm talking to our supporters every week because that's the only chance they really get to hear from anyone from the club, is me. And you know, so whether you know, I get a question that I like or I don't like, or the the person asking the question I don't like them, I've, I kind of, I do like them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no one um, but it becomes irrelevant to me because I just think they're not really asking me the question they're asking the Tottenham manager in this case the question and I th- so you know whilst you know Anth does a good job of sort of briefing me it's 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 more about like I said I, I kind of take this as an opportunity to to, to speak to our, to our supporters on kind of where I'm at and what where, where I think my thoughts are, are at in terms of the club and and take anything sort of as much as I can emotional out of it from, from my perspective or personal out of it from my perspective. It's harder after games, for sure. They're, they're, they're a lot tougher. Um, but, yeah, with these ones, you know, hopefully you have a bit of fun along the way. Um, I find it interesting what you said earlier on about the difference between progress and success. At what point in this project will progress have to include some success uh, it's it's it, it's essential. It's not just progress is not uh, sort of a, an endless road. It, progress with the objective of being successful. So when does that happen? Well, I was hoping it was happening this year, but it didn't. So my plan is for it to happen next year. But you know, at the same time, you've got to understand that progress is really messy. It's disheartening. It's dispiriting. It's it can really knock your enthusiasm because it's not linear. It's not just, you know, you're going to cop some blows along the way. And I know that's still ahead of us. Um, we've, we've had to manage a few this year. Um, and so you understand that, but the, the progress I'm talking about leads to success. And if it doesn't lead to success, then you're asking questions to a different bloke next time. It's not me because that's why I'm here. I'm here to bring success to the club. So when will... This year was my objective. It didn't happen. So now next year becomes my objective. And the quicker it happens, the, the better for, for me and for the football club. You're talking down the importance of getting the Champions League. Your, your experience and what's your experience with self club? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can help. But it, it again, it's not... Um, it can be a builder to helping you have more success the more you're in that competition, for sure, especially for a club like Celtic where they tend to dominate the domestic league. You, you know, you, you, 
you can get progress by consistently being in the Champions League, challenging yourself against better sides, learning from that. Um, hopefully, um, over time, then you know, uh, building stronger teams. And, and uh, but I look, I, it's obvious that I, I, I'm not. I don't have clarity about my message around Champions League, but um, we'll, 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 we'll stay in, in that matter. Or, or what I'll actually do is, look, I really, I'm desperate to make Champions League. I'd love to make Champions League. Champions League is what it's all about. <laughs> you look at those fixtures, if you do do it, you'll have to do it the hard way. You've got two, looks like they'll have two weeks where you've got three matches. Yeah. Are you annoyed that it's something? No, 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 not annoyed, because as I said, it's just... It just seems the way our season's gone, and like I said, some of it's self-inflicted because of our own sort of, you know, we haven't been in the competitions longer than than others, so or in Europe at all. But it's just it's just been that way this year. I, I, I've just felt, you know, and, and again, it's it's a stark contrast to where I've come from from Celtic, where we just seem to have you know, games all the time and a real flow. That this year just seems like no games and. A lot of games and no games and a lot of games, so it's just the way it is, and, and we have to accept that. Ultimately, we know we're going to have, we know now we've got one midweek fixture. We're going to have another midweek fixture for sure, um, and we just got to navigate that and, and you know try and do that to the best of our ability. Oh, definitely. Um, you said you don't want players who just want to come here. Don't be fun. What are the what are the questions you ask? It depends because, again, they're not all the same you know it's just it's just an understanding of the person I mean my only point around the Champions League was if if a player you know said to me that you know my the proviso for me signing for you guys next year is to see whether you make Champions League then I won't sign him there's nothing wrong with having that ambition you know if somebody wants to come to this club because they want to play Champions League that's great but if that's going to be the determining factor, then I'm saying, well, probably you're not going to fit into sort of what I'm trying to do right now because the reality of it is this club needs guys who are going to be up for a fight because nothing's guaranteed here. You know, even this year we're not guaranteed Champions League football. So, you know, that becomes part of the discussion. But it'll only become part of the discussion if if it's brought up. And then beyond that, it's just like I said, it's each individual case is different. You, you treat every person differently. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry, I forgot what it's called luxury tax. That's all right. <laughs>